Hey, what's up everyone? Mori Christian here, and we're going to be doing another sprinting mechanics breakdown video. I think this is like the fifth or sixth one that we've done. It's going to be of novice sprinters, just like many of you, and some of the things that we're seeing within their sprinting that they could do to improve their sprinting. This is going to be from a wide range of different athletes, which means that many of you guys can benefit from watching this video and seeing some of the things that we see within the sprinting mechanics. So we'll go ahead and hop right into it here. What stands out to me within this uh, particular athlete is I think the wrist action isn't great. I don't like when people have their hands kind of stuck with like this as they're running i think that you want to have more wrist action as you're going through the sprint uh, i also think that he can get better with the left foot height he's not getting very much height when the foot's coming back behind here that's limited in terms of the the foot height and then also the push off off the right side so he's a little bit late in being able to get that push off as that foot's coming off the ground he's getting a little stuck with the leg back behind here in general we're struggling with having a good foot strike that left side we're getting a lot of extra action here so we can see the toe turning all the way in poor backside mechanics there as the foot's coming off and then also not getting a dorsiflexion fast enough therefore causing a poor foot strike his backside mechanics aren't bad but again if you just end up wasting a lot of time and a lot of energy within the push-off then it's hard to be able to really get great foot speed you could also see he's really reaching a lot with his foot so now he's landing with his foot way too far out in front of him rather than landing with the foot underneath here i would just say that the arms are not coming through enough enough or a little bit limited in the height within the foot it's hard to really be able to see within this video he's also landing a little bit more on the outside part of the foot i would just say the arm drive coming forward can improve and you know just a little bit too limited in terms of just what's happening within the shoulders within the upper body and then therefore i think that's causing a poor foot strike is being so you don't get, get as good a front side mechanics i think it's important to have a good arm swing to make it so then you can improve your front side similar situation here not great with the arm swing right so we're getting a little bit more height with the hand with this particular athlete but he's just getting too far back with the hand not enough out with the hand and again that is causing the poor foot strikes now we're landing with the foot too far out in front rather than right underneath so the more that we can get the elbows in front of the spine then the better action we could do into the ground or the better front side action we could have into the ground with the foot to make it so then we'll have a better foot strike the big thing here i would just say that we end up getting stuck with the foot down in the ground for too long too long a foot strike so that makes it so now we end up starting to fall forward uh makes it so then we lose balance as you start to lose balance and you get out of your drive phase too early and we're already four steps in and we've just really transitioned a lot within the spine you want to be staying in this drive phase or this type of position for as long as you can so whether you either get the spine up a little bit more when you're first coming out or maintain this spine position for a longer period of time either way we have to be able to stay in our drive phase for more than just two or three steps we need to be able to stay in there for like 12 to 15 steps we're looking at lane four here main thing that stands out is going to be the again arm position the foot strike the foot height right and the, the big thing with this athlete is he's pretty good within the 100 he wants to improve his 200 he's got a good push off he's good good backside mechanics but again see how we're limited with the arm action we're not getting the elbows through especially on the left side and this is going to make it so then you end up getting the habit of landing further and further back it's going to be harder to maintain a great top speed and it's going to be hard to be able to pick up very much distance per step when you're limited in that degree within your arm swing and within your front side mechanics so really make sure that we're working on getting the elbows through to work your top speed to make it so then you can more effectively strike the ground all right so this one we just get way too forward with the arm and with the hand this first action out of the blocks wants to be really upwards with the elbows to make it so then we can get a good control of the body as we're landing if we land like this what's going to end up happening is that heel is going to fly up up in the air and we're going to end up starting to fall forward very early which is going to make it so then we have to transition out of our drive phase way too early so you can see how early it gets the spine up so make sure that when you are getting out you're getting into a spine position that you can maintain if you feel yourself having to get up out of that spine position really early on then that's how you know that your spine angle is too low the worst and most common thing that people will tell athletes to do is to stay low out of the blocks and that's just the worst thing you could do don't don't try to stay low uh, you don't want to end up popping up but we want to be able to maintain a forward position out of the spine and if you end up staying too low you're gonna have a hard time doing that because then you'll want to fall over then the spine will come up and then you end up losing that drive phase so you want to have a good balance
sense of a forward spine position, but also an upward spine position. So you have plenty of balance as you're continuing to accelerate and as you work on pushing off the ground with more and more force. All right, big one here is going to be just getting a more effective push off and being able to get more knee height, right? So I think that we're in not bad positions body wise here. I think the spine's in a good position. We're just not getting enough push off the ground. We're getting maybe a little bit too much lift or maybe trying to control the backside a little bit too much. But either way, we're just not getting the leg up and through, especially that right side. We need to really work on that right toe, right foot getting up and through so we could land more on the ball of the foot and be more effective with our foot strike. Could be a range of motion thing. Could just be one of those things where you just need to focus on working on that right leg to be able to improve your speed. This one main thing is head position. We can't get our, our chin so high. Once your chin gets up like this, now you're going to be off balance. Now you're not going to be able to really have good control as the foot striking the ground. And once you lose control, now it's hard to be able to regain that control. So keep your chin tucked to make it so then you can improve the speed and then we'll be able to address some of the other issues from there. But right now you're going to end up being very ineffective within the backside because of just simply the head position. It's going to make it so now your hips are just going to be out of alignment. Your foot strike is going to be out of alignment. Everything is off when your head is not in the right position. So this one, we got all types of issues in terms of what we're doing within the hand, within the wrist. We got to be able to improve the pullback there. And because we don't have a great pull within that left leg, it's making it so we have an inconsistent foot strike on that right side. So it's more of a limp. We're landing too far back in the foot, makes it so it's harder for us to transition off. Left side, I think we're pretty good. We're a little more consistent with the arm swing on the right side. Therefore, we can transition a little bit better into the left side where that right one, we're really not able to get the right foot up and through very effectively. The legs coming a little bit more off to the side, therefore making it so the foot strike is not great. We're landing a little bit more towards the heel, longer foot contact time, therefore bet not as good backside mechanics going to make all types of issues from there. Big thing that I would say when you're doing resistance training here is stay in the drive phase. There's no reason to come upwards too early. Look at how he, this position is a really good position to be in when you're doing resistance. There's no reason to pop your head up after three steps. Stay in your drive phase, focus on the drive phase, really get better with your acceleration because the point is we want to be able to do that for a longer period of time anyway. How long can you stay in your drive phase is really something that you should be trying to perfect and not try to get out of too quickly. Here we have a really good first step, but I think we just end up being in a position where we're a little bit over striding here. The foot is a little bit more underneath the shoulders where we really want the foot to be underneath the hips. So now that foot contact time ends up being really, really long. And then when we push off, we don't want to have this much time between when you're pushing off and when this foot ends up hitting the ground. And when this foot hits the ground, we need to be able to be covering more distance, right? We got a pretty good first step here and we just couldn't get a good second step. And now that's going to significantly slow you down. It's going to make it so you're generating way less force in the ground. This person is acting if they're going to Paris. I would say you're not going to go to Paris with this type of start. And if this is your start, then your top speed is not great either. Need to be able to improve on both. Your first step is pretty good, but we need to be able to transition off that first step a little bit more effectively to make it so then you can get to your top speed or, or make it so your top speed ends up being the full potential that you have within your body. Right now, again, that first step is good, shows that you're explosive, but the mechanics are not getting you there. So you're probably slowing down as you get going. This one, I would just say, I don't know if there's an injury that happened on the left side. We're just not getting the left foot through very effectively. The left toe doesn't get up, right? Look at how low that left toe is. Not able to create much force in the ground. Right side, pretty good. Good ankle flexion, good angles here. Not bad, but then the left foot, again, just doesn't get up very well. When it strikes the ground, it looks like the range isn't very good. It looks like the force into the ground isn't very good. The big question I have is, is there an injury that's going on that happened here? And this one, we're looking at lane two. This is a pretty significant issue here. I see this every once in a while where their foot turns out, but I don't usually see it this bad. We could see as the left foot striking, pretty good position here. But then as the right foot striking right before contact, we could see a big turnout here. He's mentioned that he goes to the gym a good amount. And what I would recommend is don't squat so much to make it so we can get better control of the ankle. You should be doing a lot more uh, plyometric type exercises, jumping off the right leg, landing on the right leg, making this so when you're landing on that right leg, we're not turning out. That would be my recommendation for you. You could do single leg broad jumps. Just do a lot more plyometric exercises, not so much squatting to make it so you can improve this issue. Here's an interesting one. So big thing that we want to be able to understand here is just the timing of extension. So we could see with this leg as it's coming off the ground, notice that we get extension in the knee before the foot is coming off the ground. We should be getting the opposite, right? We should be pushing off the ground to get extension in the knee, not getting extension in the knee and then pushing off the ground. 
This is going to make it so we have poor backside mechanics. It's also going to make it so we generate a little amount of force in the ground. I just watched a thing recently where Noah Lyles was on Jimmy Fallon. He was saying how he puts like 300 pounds of force into the ground or into the blocks as he's getting out. Well, that's this is not going to be able to do that for you. This is not going to be able to make it so you can generate very much force into the blocks. You want to have the same mentality as you're getting off as you're generating 300 pounds of force into the box going back, not by really trying to push out. And that's what we're seeing here. Too much of a push out and also not good mechanics within the knees, within the ankles, therefore impacting your ability to start and get be explosive out of the start. All right, this person ran low 11s here, did a good job in the race. Big thing I would say is in the start, let's get, generate more force from the beginning, right? We're getting a little bit too caught up in leg lift, knee drive, getting the foot up, or we really want to be creating force back and down as we're starting to accelerate. You get into your top speed very effectively or your top speed is really good. Let's stay in your drive phase a little bit longer. Don't be as in big of a rush to get your head up and get your chest up. I think you got out of your drive phase too early, got out of your acceleration phase too early because you're putting too less of force down into the ground. So the better you can concentrate on ground force, acceleration, drive phase, the better you're going to over your overall speed's going to get to as much as you already have really good speed. You want to just be able to improve that acceleration so you don't have to be coming back during these races. You have a great ability to accelerate to make it so then it's a very smooth win and you're getting into I think the mid tens are definitely within your grasp. All right, big thing that I would say here is we need to get better with the wrist action. The wrists were a little bit ineffective here with this athlete, especially on this left side where we're pulling back. We're also getting a little bit too high with the hands, so the arm action could definitely get better. You could see what he was doing with the wrist. There's just too much additional movement there. It's hard to be able to recover, and then therefore the hips end up getting back behind too much. We got to make sure that we're getting the hips through. It's hard to see from this position, but I've just seen this issue before. So as you're running, make sure you're getting those hips through. Make sure we're landing as much towards the front part of the foot as possible. The more your hips are back, the more that heel is going to start to drop and you're going to end up having a longer foot contact time. So control the wrist, control the hips, make it so you can generate more force in the ground. You're going to be able to run faster. And last but not least, we have a 400 meter runner here and he has an issue with his finish. This isn't the first time that I've gotten a request like this before. Pretty good. And I think he still ended up winning the race. He might have came in second. He's winning most of the race. That's for sure. Big thing that I would say is we need to be able to get the elbows forward, right? We could see another athlete that's not getting the elbows forward, not reaching. Therefore, you're going to end up dying. You know, you're going to end up, you're putting a lot of pressure on just your legs to end up generating a lot of the force here. So the more we can get those elbows forward, the more we could reach, especially with that right arm, the better the front side mechanics are going to be. And then I would just continue to push your hips forward as you're going. Be nice and quick with getting those heels up. So you don't want to waste time with your heels on the ground. We want to be pushing those hips through. See, we're landing with the, the foot too far out in front of the hips. Our hips are too far back. We have too long of a contact time or heels take too long to get up off the ground and therefore you're just putting a lot more energy into these runs as opposed to if you're reaching with the arms keeping those hips forward you'd have a lot more momentum and be able to sustain that momentum and therefore run a better race and you can see here he i think he still won but it was just a very very close race oh no it looks like he came in second but he should have won i'm uh, just going to work on some of the techniques to clean that up and i think you'll be able to run a better 400 thanks for watching guys i'll have uh, some links to maybe some of these other types of breakdowns that we did as well as some exercises and drills that you could do in order to improve your speed. Talk to you soon.